guys uh, and gals, I have a fun little video for you today. And it actually has nothing to do with Wampler pedals at all, of course. But I think it's something that's going to help a lot of people that like to use boss pedals or non-true bypass pedals. Uh, we talk and have talked, and everyone talks a lot about true bypass, whether it's good or bad, and the advantages and disadvantages. So I kind of want to turn it the other way today and show you kind of a problem that happens when you have too many buffered pedals, too many buffers, or too many non-true bypass pedals. In this case, I am using uh, pretty much all boss, except for a tube screamer. So I do have a tube screamer in there, and I've got it ran through an old looper that, uh, just a true bypass loop that I built in like 2003 or two or something like that, basically. It looks horrible, but it functions just fine. But now let me show you what happens whenever we bypass everything and just go direct from guitar cable to, well, guitar cable to switch to another cable to amp. So with all the pedals when they're on, when they're all on, when the sound's going through all of them, on my true bypass loop, the light is on. As you can see on the switch there, the light is on. Uh, if I turn it off, that's just my basic guitar into amp sound, bypassing all the boss stuff. So this is a good test to see what happens whenever you have too many buffers on your pedal board and uh, not enough true bypass stuff. So here is the sound with uh, without any boss pedals on. So as you can see, the sound is actually lower. You're actually losing sound by going through all those pedals because whenever whenever a pedal is off, whenever a, a non-true bypass pedal is off, you're still going through buffers. Sometimes in boss pedals, there's always two. Sometimes there's three buffers that you're going through in each pedal, and that's just when it's off. So it just depends on the actual pedal. It varies from boss to boss, from unit to unit. Again, with the boss pedals on, with them off, so that's my true bypass sound. That's the sound of just a guitar and amp. If you don't have a looper, or a true bypass loop, or you're not using any sort of looping device, looping meaning patches and, you know, like a, a switcher of some sort. If you don't have anything like that, you can use a boost pedal and just barely edge it up. If you don't have a boost pedal, like a transparent type boost, you want to put it towards the end, actually, past all the dirt, past all the delay, basically at the very, very end. Um, you can also use just an EQ pedal. Just edge the level up just a bit. Don't mess with the EQ unless you want to change the actual EQ. And I'll show you what that sounds like. So let me turn on the EQ pedal that I already have the volume set up a little bit. I'll go from guitar into amp into guitar into boss pedals. And we'll see that the volume is now about the same. So right now I'm just guitar into amp. So as you can see, with the boss, with the EQ on, just boosting the level a little bit, I do get, I do get a little bit more sparkliness. Spark, I don't know if that's a word, I just made it up, if not. But that's because, like, we're buffering. We have, we're not getting any sort of degradation of sound from 30, well, what is this, 212, so 24 foot of guitar cable. So there's, there's an advantage and disadvantage. I usually like to use one buffer going into everything, and then true bypass pedals after that. It's my personal preference. Right here, I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 boss pedals, which would be a pretty substantial pedal board full, full of non-true bypass pedals. But I think it's a good, uh, it's something to be aware of if you use a lot of non-true bypass pedals. For the next part, I want to show you a very well-written artic article by Jack Orman, who's kind of like the godfather of boutique along with RG Keen and a few other guys. Basically, guy knows his stuff and he's been around since the beginning. He documented this perfectly as to why it happens. If you want to read it, if you're an engineer type and you love reading the math, I'll give you his link. You can go check it out. For the rest of us, you know, just like to know the, the basic gist of it. We don't want to pull out a calculator. I'll explain it in layman's terms for you. So let's go over this way. 
All right, so I am on music.com. That's M-U-Z-I-Q-U-E.com. This is Jack Orman's page. If you don't know who Jack Orman is, he, along with R.G. Keen and Mark Hammer and just a bunch of guys from the original DIY stomp boxes for him. There's a few forms before that, too, where, like, DIY, DIY guys would congregate. But anyways, Jack is, he's, like, one of the, quote-unquote, godfathers of what I, a lot of us consider the pedal industry. He just, um, in the DIY world, he was writing about this stuff long before anyone else was discussing it. Uh, way before I was doing any books with modif modifications or anything else like that, Jack had had websites up in the n late 90s, I think, uh, about, you know, basic DIY electronic stuff. He was R.G. Keen or big, big heroes of mine personally. So check out if you're an engineer mind and you, you, like, you like the technical stuff, make sure you check out his site. There's a ton of great stuff on there. So we are on his bypass page. So music.com slash lab slash bypass dot htm. And you can see in this first graph here, he's running just a regular signal, like, not like a guitar signal, just like a sound, a sine wave, through some software to kind of measure it, okay? So this is that this is just the regular sound without going through anything. And uh, then the next graph you see here is four true bypass pedals put together, like in parallel, or in series rather, which is how you would generally run them on a pedal board. So no change really. A little bit in the high end, probably due to the ca cable capacitance and, uh, and not being, you know, a lower impedance. And then now we add four uh, basically boss style pedals using the JFET flip-flop electronic circuit, which basically that's just the type of circuit that the boss pedals generally use, using FETs as kind of electronic switches rather than a mechanical switch. So you can see on this graph, it does take some signal down. It's it's losing, um, I think he says, about two and a half decibels after four pedals. So what I say, I had nine or 10, so we're, we're losing quite a, quite a bit of range. And uh, it also drops out some bass in the very low frequencies and the high frequencies. It kills a little bit of highs, not nearly as much as running 40 feet of guitar cable without a buffer though. You can kind of see, in this next graph, uh, true bypass versus the JFET bypass, uh, four pedals strung in a row. So you can see there is a big difference there, which is why so many of us have insisted on true bypass, but with a buffer, because it's like, it's you, you really want some sort of buffer. I've explained this a million times, so I'm not gonna go over it again. You want some sort of buffer in there for that lower impedance so your cables don't take as much high end, but too many, too many of those and too many of the non-true bypass circuits, you're going to uh, see a degradation of tone, especially with, especially with, it's not really as much as there being a buffer in the signal path as it is the JFET style switching in, in that flip-flop style circuit. And, and, and there's, there's some other pedals that I think like the Nobles, I think for example, is one of them that uses basically like a little IC chip as a switcher rather than FETs. Some people say that that's even worse sounding, I, your mileage may vary, it's, I'll leave that up to you to decide, but there are different ways of doing electric bypass, and uh, the most common way is using, you know, the way the boss does, the flip-flops. Anyways, I hope that helped you. Uh, again, if you, if you like this kind of stuff and you like the sort of heady um, mathematics of everything, then please check out jacksitemusic.com. And uh, we will, uh, I'll do another video for you here in a few days. Appreciate everyone. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. We'll see you in a few days. Thanks for watching. Later.